Ladies and gentlemen, people of the internet, today I will be sharing with you the truth about EIP-1559, the most hotly anticipated Ethereum update we have had in a while. That said, there is a lot of confusion about what EIP-1559 actually does. Will it fix gas fees? Will it send Ether to the moon with deflationary Ether? What does it do? I'll explain all this stuff in clear terms so you can be ready when the update kicks off here shortly. And by the way, if you're into cryptocurrency, please do consider subscribing and hitting the bell for more videos like this. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. So on August 4th, 2021, and that may have passed if you're watching this later on, the London hard fork will land on the Ethereum mainnet on block 12,965,000, likely around the morning time in Eastern time. This hard fork will bring five Ethereum improvement proposals or EIPs to the network, of which the most controversial and universally discussed is EIP in 1559 which makes wholesale changes to the fee market on Ethereum's mainnet. I've seen a lot of discussion about this on social media, about how EIP-1559 is going to help reduce fees on the Ethereum network or fix congestion, which is not exactly true. The truth is, these changes to the fee market will have two major impacts on the Ethereum network for users. First, it will provide a more predictable fee payment experience with far less instances of gross fee overpayment for transactions on Ethereum. And second, the new fee market's base fee burning mechanism will enforce a drastic reduction in the issuance or inflation of Ether into supply, even potentially making the supply deflationary where the issuance per block is less than what is burned in fees. But more on that later. This doesn't make total sense yet. That's totally okay. Let's go ahead and unpack this a little bit more and explain the actual mechanisms behind this. So to explain how this works, I think the best place to start is to explain how fees on Ethereum work now versus how they will work with EIP-1559. The first thing to remember is that fees are measured in a utility called gas, which is paid in small denominations of Ether called GUE. Gas is what users pay to have their transactions validated by the Ethereum network and pays for the resources used by that transaction. Smart contract execution transactions, of course, use more gas because they require computation and even potentially storage on the network, which comes with the price. Each block of transactions has a gas limit, which also then determines how many transactions can fit into one block. And that's the overall. Miners who validate transactions, of course, are incented to then process the highest fee transactions because these miners get paid out in Ether for the gas fees paid in transactions that they validate. So if you think about it, as a user sending a transaction today, you are a buyer or a bidder and miners are selling or auctioning gas to you, which is capacity on the network. These dynamics create the very complex and often unpredictable fee market that we have in Ethereum today. So nowadays, how does this all work in, in, in truth? Ethereum's fee market today is based on something called a first price auction mechanism, whereby users submit transactions with a maximum amount of gas, a ceiling that they're willing to pay on a transaction. This is called a gas limit. And that's based on current conditions on the network. Basically, it's a total guess about what will put you up against other users and get you prioritized in a block. When users go to make transactions in the Ethereum network, their wallet will help them provide a best guess estimate of what that gas limit should be, which is required to issue a transaction and get it validated in a shorter, medium, or longer period of time, depending on your needs. The problem is it can be really unpredictable and the gas required can fluctuate drastically in short periods of time, leaving many instances where users have stuck transactions or more often they have overpaid in fees because of this opacity in the process. The overall volatility and lack of transparency in the fee market today leads to excessively overpaid transaction fees in certain market conditions. But more importantly, it makes fee calculation a very imprecise and unpredictable process that is highly variable depending on what wallet you're using and the view it has of market conditions or network conditions that is, and of course the competing transactions pricing. Now EIP-1559 is flipping this entire fee mechanism on its head and it's introducing a predictable base fee mechanism, often referred to as a fixed price sale model, as opposed to a fixed price auction. First thing that you need to know is that it introduces a variable block capacity mechanism, which gives it a baseline block gas limit of 12 and a half million. That's sort of like the 50% capacity to a max cap of 25 million gas per block. Then a base fee for transactions will be calculated based on network congestion or the deviation from that baseline 12 and a half million gas per block capacity. 
In effect, instead of making a somewhat blind estimate for first price auction bids with a max limit of gas to be consumed, users will pay a predictable base gas fee that is calculated based on the congestion of the network, or in this case, the fullness of the previous block at the time that you are making your transaction. For each new block that is full to the new max capacity, it will then levy a 12.5% increase in base fee to economically lever the network back towards that baseline of 12.5 million gas, effectively balancing peak congestion transaction demand and the stability of the network itself. Now, this base fee is a huge improvement from the first price auction in the sense that it's predictable and efficient so that users are less likely to overpay exorbitantly in fees and it makes it a lot clearer what fees should be paid. However, there is one element that you need to consider. On top of this base fee, there is a second tier of fee that one can pay on top of that base fee to get their transaction processed faster. And this is basically a tip on top of the base fee. And that's what will remain as an additional payment to miners who validate these transactions in priority. To that end, there is still going to be an element of bidding that can be done to speed up one's transaction or get it prioritized in a block. It is likely that miners will make up a significant portion of their revenue from these transaction tips, but that remains to be seen. All right, so there's only one sort of last element here that I'm sure that you're wondering about that we haven't quite explained in this talk about fee calculation. And that is all of this hype about deflationary ether supply and how ether is going to the moon because of EIP 1559. As you'll recall, that base fee that I talked about is calculated predictably based on network congestion and measured by block capacity on a rolling basis. Now those base fees paid will be burnt from the supply of ether when those transactions are consummated into blocks. And when I say burnt, I mean they are effectively removed from supply, which means that as transactions flow through the network and get validated, it will reduce the inflation rate of ether supply. Now today, the primary way by which Ether supply increases is in the block subsidy or the flat reward of two Ether that a miner gets for making a block on the network. This is new supply, which will now be offset by the base fees that are burned for every block. So this is indeed a nice economic phenomenon for holders of Ether, but I wanna quell the expectations that have been so heavily inflated these days. This is not going to mean that tomorrow Ether is deflating in supply and you're gonna see a 10X on your Ether holdings by the end of the month, okay? Maybe we see our significant bounce because of the excitement. It's really hard to predict though. The first step is going to be seeing what type of base fees and congestion there is on the network first. How much are we burning per block against that subsidy? This will determine how much ether is being burnt against the issuance from that block subsidy and subsequently whether or not we're gonna to get to deflationary ETH quickly. That will give us an indication of what to expect. I would imagine that for now, the effect of EIP 1559 outside of high congestion periods will simply be a reduction in issuance rather than a shift quickly towards deflation because it is unclear exactly how much ether will be burnt in mainnet when this goes live. There are models, there are predictions, but only that, we're gonna have to wait and see. Regardless, the decision to introduce base fee burning was critical to the design of EIP 1559's fee market, not as a mechanism to pump Ether's price. On the other hand, there is also concern that miners will revolt against this hard fork as a result of the lower potential rewards with the base fee burn, because they normally were getting those before in rewards. But again, this is something that we will have to wait and see on. It's unclear how the new economic models will affect minor revenue definitively long term. The bet is that the total loss in minor revenue, expected maybe in the 20 or 30% range by that base fee, will be outweighed by the increase in Ether's price and the opportunity cost of shirking long term revenue opportunities on the network. Again, we'll see what happens. All right, so we've covered what EIP 1559 is designed to do, which is to realign the fee market in Ethereum on a predictable, protocol-based fixed price sale model, where a user's wallet can easily quote them a gas fee based on network conditions that are governed by the protocol itself. These network conditions will be measured by how full the previous block of transactions is relative to the baseline or target capacity, and fees will increase by a magnitude of 1.125x for each 100% capacity block. Users can then pay tips on top of that base fee for priority space in those blocks. The increasing fees are intended to create economic pressure to keep the network at its ideal capacity of 50% full blocks. It's at that 12 and a half million gas range. And finally, the base fees paid for each block of transactions will be burned from Ether's supply, reducing the inflation rate over time and potentially making Ether deflationary in the future if estimates are correct. For the user, 
This means that each wallet that they use will have a more standard method for fee calculation and the protocol itself will quote a price which the user can determine is acceptable or not in a given period of time. Very predictable. The user experience will be far better and this should hopefully clear up a lot of the issues with fees in terms of how predictable they are and overpaying fees. However, there's one misleading talking point that keeps floating around about this update. And that is that EIP 1559 is designed to reduce gas prices. This is simply not the case. Of course, by way of more predictable base fees and less variability between wallets in terms of gas limit calculations in that auction mechanism, we may see some reduction in the gas paid for transactions. But this is just a side effect of the transparency and predictability, not the design of the protocol itself. It is likely that at peak congestion, gas prices will still be high. And while overpayment will happen far less, there will still be fee bidding with tips on top of that base fee. This is not a bona fide solution to high fees in Ethereum, and the core Ethereum team has made it very clear that this is the case in write-ups and research, making it very clear that the only true solution to the gas cost problem is more scalability, which will come in the short term with roll-ups and layer twos, and in the long term with Ethereum 2.0. I will repeat for clarity, there is no solution to high gas fees in Ethereum for the long term except for more scalability. EIP 1559 is not going to fix this. Finally, I do want to mention that there is a whole deep area of study around security modeling, binary extractable value, or MEV, MEV, and all sorts of other topics related to economics and fee markets in Ethereum. This video could have been hours long, but I wanted to sort of distill it down to tell you what EIP 1559 is exactly designed to do, what it's expected to do, and where you might have heard things that are a bit misleading in all the fanfare around the upgrade. The very bottom line, the TLDR, is that this is a much needed user experience and economic element that needed to be changed in the Ethereum network. And it could very well introduce significant upside in Ether's price over time, given the reduced rate of inflation, particularly when proof of stake merge happens with ETH 2.0. And above all, I want to encourage you to dig even deeper into this subject, to learn more, to figure out more, to understand how all these different things work, and of course, to be measured in your positivity or negativity about EIP 1559 and the other changes coming in the London hard fork. There is a lot that we're going to learn about this pretty quickly after it launches, so let's wait and see and then we will reconvene on this in a future episode. Now, as always, folks, if you enjoy Crypto Explainer content like this, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you have some time to stick around, check out this video here linked on the screen with some promising altcoin projects that I'm keeping an eye on in the crypto space right now. Have a fantastic week and weekend ahead. And until next time, cheers.